as an athlete, performer, or competitor. Getting nervous, tight, or in any way physically tense, even in a very subtle way, will hinder your ability to perform. And it's one of the major mental blocks. I operate under this principle. Performance equals potential minus interference. Meaning, you will play, compete, or perform your best when you have no interference or mental emotional blocks. And to be able to clear this mental block, nervousness, it's extremely helpful to understand it first and then we can take it apart. And let me explain your solution to this problem I'm using my four step RACE formula, race formula for mental toughness, which I developed from my experience working with thousands of athletes and performers worldwide over the years and because this is the vehicle that will transport you to clearing this block. It's what I use for everything now to help my clients acquire mental toughness. R stands for relentless and it means you must be relentless about your ability and desire to change these bodily nervous system reactions. These reactions that are seemingly out of your control. They are not. I give you the tools to believe you can change them and to actually do it. You just can't give up on it and I promise you it will go away. And this video starts that process for you. A, that stands for awareness. So let's go there on this mental block, awareness about it, nervousness. It's simply the fear response, fight or flight. It's a survival mechanism that has helped us human beings be be the most successful species on the planet. Now, fear is an emotion that has as its function to protect your body when there's physical threat. Now, why would we get the fear response when we're performing or about to perform? What's the fear our body is automatically triggering? Well, generally, it's fear of failure or sometimes fear of success. And here's the thing. Your body does not know the difference between your being afraid to fail at this event or competition and you facing a wild animal walking in the woods. It's the same chemical and electrical reactions happening all throughout your body and what your body is trying to do for you is send all the resources, energy, blood, adrenaline to the big muscles of your body in order to physically protect yourself or to run and in some cases to freeze like a deer in the headlights. What happens is you lose your fine motor skills and your ability to think straight. C is clear. You see, I believe there is always a reason why we do everything we do and there is a reason why we respond and react like we do. And that goes for the fear response just the same. And you have to clear the reason why you fear failure or success. And here's the kicker. You have to do it at the inner mind or the bodily level. You can't just think it. For example, you might just think, I'm afraid of blowing at this next game or performance because if I do, then I won't be able to make it to the next level. Or I might get kicked out of the level I'm at. Makes sense, right? You probably can relate to that, I'm sure. And then let's say you run into a mental coach or sports psychologist who tells you, well, even if you do blow it or choke, you can still come back, learn from the experience, and use your determination to be better the next time. Now, logically, this makes sense, right? It should counter that fear of failure thought you had, and it should stop the fear cold, right? But it doesn't. Because the problem is, that's just all up in your head. You have to get that countering thought into the body's programming for it to stop the fear response because it's an automatic bodily reaction. So to clear the bodily programming, you have to first have the right counter thought for you and you have to get it from your head into your body. How do you do that? Well, I could teach for hours on that. And that principle runs through everything I do and is a reason why I have such a high success rate with my clients. But the gist of it is this. The best way to get to your inner mind is to intend to do so and practice it a lot. Now I do this in part for my clients with guided visualization. 
Moving on to E, emotional mastery. This is the final piece to the nervousness block. If fear is the cause of nervousness and failure in your competition will not result in any bodily harm, well, what are you really afraid of then? In other words, give me, let me give you an example. When I work with an athlete, like let's say a basketball player in my office, and I ask, what will happen to you if you miss the game winning shot? Will somebody shoot you? Will somebody stick a knife in you? Will somebody beat you up after the game? Will you be without food, clothing, and shelter? No, of course not. The only thing that happens to you is you will feel bad. You will feel difficult emotions like disappointment, embarrassment, frustration. That's all normal. You see, that's what you're ultimately afraid of. That's what's triggering your nervousness. Well, what if? What if you weren't afraid of disappointment, embarrassment, and all the other emotions? Guess what? No more nervousness. Now, yes, some sports are physically dangerous, like gymnastics and motorsports, combat sports. That's true. But I'm here to tell you, from my experience with hundreds of these athletes too, fear of physical harm is actually an easier fix and a smaller part of that nervousness. Thoughts lead to emotions, which lead to bodily feelings, like tightness. And those feelings influence performance and action. Now I'm going to send you an email tomorrow to pick up where I left off here and give you more tools for all of this. Look for it. The race formula always works when you work it. I'm Craig Sigal, your mental toughness trainer. Let's do this.